Now I tell what I knew of Texas in my early youth. I tell not the fall of Alamo. Not one escaped to tell the fall of Alamo. The hundred and fifty are dumb yet at Alamo. Tis the tale of the murder in cold blood of four hundred and twelve young men. Retreating, they had formed in a hollow square with their baggage for breastworks. Nine hundred lives out of the surrounding enemies. Nine times their number was the price they took in advance. Their colonel was wounded and their ammunition gone. They treated for an honorable capitulation. Receiving writing and seal, gave up their arms and marched back prisoners of war. They were the glory of the race of rangers, matchless with horse, rifle, song, supper, courtship. Large, turbulent, generous, handsome, proud, and affectionate. Bearded, sunburnt, dressed in the free costume of hunters, not a single one over 30 years of age. The second first day morning, they were brought out in squads and massacred. It was beautiful early summer. The work commenced about five o'clock and was over by eight. None obeyed the command to kneel. Some made a mad and helpless rush. Some stood stark and straight. A few fell at once, shot in the temple or heart. The living and dead lay together, the maimed and mangled dug in the dirt, the newcomers saw them there, some half killed, attempted to crawl away. These were dispatched with bayonets or battered with the blunts of muskets. A youth not 17 years old seized his assassin till two more came to release him. All the three were torn and covered with the boy's blood. At 11 o'clock began the burning of the bodies. That is the tale of the murder of the 412 young men. Would you hear of an old time sea fight? Would you learn who won by the light of the moon and stars? List to the yarn as my grandmother's father, the sailor told it to me. Our foe was no skulk in this ship, I tell you, said he. His was the surly English pluck and there is no tougher or truer and never was and never will be. Along the lowered eve he came horribly raking us. We closed with him, the yards entangled, the cannon touched. My captain lashed fast with his own hands. We'd received some eighteen-pound shots under the water. On our lower gun deck two large pieces had burst at the first fire, killing all around and blowing up overhead. Fighting at sundown, fighting at dark, ten o'clock at night, the full moon well up, our leaks on the gain and five feet of water reported, the master at arms loosing the prisoners confined in the afterhold to give them a chance for themselves. The transit to and from the magazine is now stopped by the sentinels. They see so many strange faces they do not know whom to trust. Our frigate takes fire. The other asks if we demand quarter, if our colors are struck and the fighting done. Now I laugh content, for I hear the voice of my little captain. We have not struck, he composedly cries. We have just begun our part of the fighting. Only three guns are in use. One is directed by the captain himself against the enemy's main mast, to well served with grape and canister silence his musketry and clear his des decks. The tops alone second the fire of this little battery, especially the main top. They hold out bravely during the whole of the action. Not a moment's cease. The leaks gain fast on the pumps. The fire eats toward the powder magazine. One of the pumps has been shot away. It is generally thought we are sinking. Serene stands the little captain. He is not hurried. His voice is neither high nor low. His eyes give more light to us than our batter lanterns. Toward twelve, there in the beams of the moon they surrender to us. Stretched and still lies the midnight, two great hulls motionless on the breast of the darkness. Our vessel riddled and slowly sinking, preparations to pass to the one we have conquered. Captain on the quarterdeck, coldly giving his orders through a countenance white as a sheet. Nearby, the corpse of the child that served in the cabin, the dead face of an old salt with long white hair and carefully curled whiskers. The flames, spite of all that can be done, flickering aloft and below. The husky voices of the two or three officers yet fit for duty. Formless stacks of bodies and bodies by themselves, dabs of flesh upon the masts and spars, 
Cut of cordage, dangle of rigging, slight shock of the soothe of waves. Black and impassive guns, litter of powder parcels, strong scent. A few large stars overhead, silent and mournful shining, delicate sniffs of sea breeze. Smells of sedgy grass and fields by the shore, death messages given in charge to survivors. The hiss of the surgeon's knife, the gnawing teeth of his saw, wheeze, cluck, swash of falling blood, short, wild scream, and long, dull, tapering groan. These so, these irretrievable. You laggards, there on guard, look to your arms. In at the conquered doors they crowd. I am possessed, embody all presences outlawed or suffering. See myself in prison shaped like another man and feel the dull, unintermitted pain. For me, the keepers of convicts shoulder their carabines and keep watch. It is I let out in the morning and barred at night. Not a mutineer walks handcuffed to jail, but I am handcuffed to him and walk by his side. I am less the jolly one there, and more the silent one with sweat on my twitching lips. Not a youngster is taken for larcency, but I go up too, and am tried and sentenced. Not a cholera patient lies at the last gasp, but I also lie at the last gasp. My, ash, my face is ash-colored, my sinews gnarl, away from me people retreat. Askers embody themselves in me, and I am embodied in them. I project my hat, sit shamefaced, and beg. Enough, enough, enough. Somehow I have been stunned. Stand back. Give me a little time beyond my cuffed head, slumbers, dreams gaping. I discover myself on the verse of a usual mistake. That I could forget the mockers and insults. That I could forget the trickling tears and the blows of the bludgeons and hammers. That I could look with a separate look on my own crucifixion and bloody crowning. I remember now. I resume the overstayed fraction. The grave of rock multiplies what has been confided to it or to any graves. Corpses rise, gashes heal, fastenings roll from me. I troop forth, replenished with supreme power, one of an average unending procession. Inland and seacoast we go, and pass all boundary lines, our swift ordinances on their way over the whole earth. The blossoms we wear in our hats, the growth of thousands of years. Levs, I suit you. Come forward, continue your annotations, continue your questionings. The friendly and flowing savage, who is he? Is he waiting for civilization or past it and mastering it? Is he some Southwesterner raised outdoors? Is he Canadian? Is he from Mississippi country, Iowa, Oregon, California? The mountains, prairie life, bush life, or sailor from the sea? Wherever he goes, men and women accept and desire him. They desire he should like them. Touch them, speak to them, stay with them. Behavior lawless as snowflakes, words simple as grass, uncombed head, laughter and naivete. Slow stepping feet, common features, common modes and emanations. They descend in new forms from the tips of his fingers. They are wafted with the odor of his body or breath. They fly out of the glance of his eyes. Flaunt of the sunshine, I need not your basque lie over. Your light surfaces only, I force surfaces and depths also. Earth, you seem to look for something at my hands. Say, old top knot, what do you want? Man or woman, I might tell how I like you, but cannot, and might tell what is in me, and what is in you, but cannot, and might tell what pining I have, that pulse of my nights and days, Behold, I do not give lectures or a little charity. When I give, I give myself. You there, impotent, loosen the knees. Open your scarf chops till I blow grit within you. Spread your palms and life the flaps of your pockets. I am not to be denied. I compel. I have stories plenty and to spare, and anything I have, I bestow. I do not ask who you are. That is not important to me. You can do nothing and be nothing but what I will enfold you. 
To cotton field drudge or cleaner of privies, I lean on his right cheek, I put the family kiss, and in my soul I swear I never will deny him. On woman fit for conception, I start bigger and nimbler babes. This day I am jetting the stuff of far more arrogant republics. To anyone dying, thither I speed and twist the knob of the door, turn the bedclothes towards the foot of the bed, let the physician and the priest go home. I seize the descending man and raise him with resistless will. O oh, despairer, here is my neck. By God, you shall not go down. Hang your whole weight upon me. I dilate you with tremendous breath. I buoy you up. Every room of the house do I fill with an armed force, lovers of me, bafflers of graves. Sleep. I and they keep guard all night. Not doubt, not disease shall dare to lay finger upon you. I have embraced you and henceforth possess you to myself, and when you rise in the morning, you will find what I tell you is so. I am he bringing help for the sick as they pant on their backs, and for strong, upright men I bring yet more needed help. I heard what was said of the universe, heard it and heard it of several thousand years. It is middling well as far as it goes, but is that all? Magnifying and applying come I, outbidding at the start of old cautious hucksters, taking myself the exact dimensions of Jehovah, Lithograph and Kronos, Zeus his son and Hercules his grandson. Buying drafts of Osiris, Isis, Belus, Brahma, Buddha, in my portfolio placing Manitou loose, Allah on a leaf, the crucifix engraved with Odin and the hideous face Mextili and every idol and image, taking them all for what they are worth and not a cent more, admitting they were alive and did the work of their days. They bore mites as for unfledged birds who have now to rise and fly and sing for themselves, accepting the rough deific sketches to fill out better in myself, bestowing them freely on each man and woman I see discovering as much or more in framer framing a house, putting higher claims for him there with his rolled up sleeves, driving the mallet and chisel, not objecting to special revelations, considering a curl of smoke or a hair on the back of my hand, just as curious as any revelation. Lads, a hold of fire engines and hook and ladder ropes, no less to me than the gods of the antique wars minding their voices peal through the crash of destruction, their brawny limbs passing safe over charred laths, their white foreheads whole and unhurt out of the flames, by the mechanic's wife with her babe at her nipple interceding for every person born, three sighs that harvest whizzing in a row from three lusty angels with shirts bagged out at their waists, the snag-toothed hostler with red hair redeeming sins past and to come, selling all he possesses, traveling on foot to fee lawyers for his brother, and sit by him while he's tried for forgery. What was strewn in the amplest strewing, the square rod about me, and not filling the square rod then. The bull and the bug never worshipped half enough. Dung and dirt more admirable than was dreamed. The supernatural of no account, myself waiting my time to be one of the supremes the day getting ready for me when I shall do as much good as the best and be as prodigious. By my life lumps, becoming already a creator, putting myself here and now to the ambushed womb of the shadows. A call in the midst of the crowd, my own voice overturned sweeping and final. Come, my children. Come, my boys and girls, my women, household and intimates, now the performer launches his nerve. He has passed his prelude on reeds within. Easily written, loose-fingered chords, I feel the thrum of your climax and close. My head slews round on my neck. Music rolls, but not from the organ. Folks are around me, but they are no household of mine. Ever the hard, unsunk ground, ever the eaters and drinkers, ever the upward and downward sun, ever the air and the ceaseless tides, ever myself and my neighbors, refreshing, wicked, real, ever the old, inexplicable query, ever that thorned thumb, that breath of itches and thirsts, ever the vexers hoot, hoot, till we find where the sly one hides and brings him forth, ever love, 
the ever-sobbing liquid of life, ever the bandage under the chin, ever the trestles of death. Here and there with dimes on the eyes walking to feed the greed of the belly, the brains liberally spooning, tickets buying, taking, selling, but into the feast never once going. Many sweating, plowing, thrashing, and then the chaff for payment receiving, a few idly owning, and they the wheat continually claiming. This is the city, and I am one of the citizens. Whatever interests the rest interests me. Politics, wars, markets, newspapers, schools, the mayor and councils, banks, tariffs, steamships, factories, stocks, stores, real estate, and personal estate. The little plentiful mannequins skipping around in collars and tailored coats. I am aware who they are. They are positively not worms or fleas. I acknowledge the duplicates of myself. The weakest and shallowest is deathless with me. What I do and say the same waits for them. Every thought that flounders in me, the same flounders in them. I know perfectly well my own egotism, know my omnivorous lines, and must not write any less and would fetch you whoever you are, flush with myself. Not words of routine, this song of mine, but abruptly to question, to leap beyond yet nearer bring, this printed and bound book, but the printer and the printing office boy, the well-taken photographs, but your wife or friend close and solid in your arms, the black ship mailed with iron, her mighty guns in her turrets, but the pluck of the captain and engineers, in the houses, the dishes, fair and furniture, but the host and hostess and the look out of their eyes, the sky up there, yet here or next door or across the way, the saints and sages in history, but you yourself, sermons, creeds, theology, but the fathomless human brain, and what is reason, and what is love, and what is life. I do not despise you priests all time the world over. My faith is the greatest of faiths and the least of faiths. In closing worship, ancient and modern and all between ancient and modern. Believing I shall come again upon the earth after 5,000 years, waiting responses from oracles, honoring the gods, saluting the sun. Making a fetish of the first rock or stump, powwowing with sticks in the circle of Obis, helping the Lama or Brahmin as he trims the lamps of the idols. Dancing yet through the streets in a phallic procession, wrapped and austere in the woods of a gymnophist. Drinking mead from the skull cup, to Shastus and Vedas admirant, minding the Koran, walking the Tacolis, spotted with gore from the stone and knife, beating the serpent skin drum. Accepting the Gospels, accepting him that was crucified, knowing assuredly that he is divine. To the mass kneeling or the Puritan's prayer rising or sitting patiently in a pew, ranting and frothing in my insane crisis or waiting deadlike till my spirit arouses me, looking forth on pavement and land or outside of pavement and land, belonging to the winders of the circuit of circuits, one that centripetal and centrifugal gang, I turn and talk like a man leaving charges before a journey. Downhearted doubters, dull and excluded, frivolous, sullen, moping, angry, affected, disheartened, aesthetical, I know every one of you. I know the sea of torment, of doubt and despair and unbelief, how the flukes splash, how they contort, rapid as lightning, with spasms and spouts of blood. Be at peace, bloody flukes, of doubters and sullen mopers. I take my place among you as much as among any. The past is the push of you, me, all, precisely the same. And what is yet untried and afterward is for you, me, all, precisely the same. I do not know what is untried and afterward, but I know it will in its turn prove sufficient and cannot fail. Each who passes is considered. Each who stops is considered. Not a single one can it fail. It cannot fail the young man who died and was buried, nor the young woman who died and was put by his side, nor the little child that peeped in at the door, then drew back and was never seen again, nor the old man who has lived without purpose and feels it with bitterness worse than gall, nor him in the poorhouse, tuberculed by rum and the bad disorder, 
nor the numberless slaughtered and wrecked, nor the brutish Kobo called the odor of humanity nor the sacks merely floating with open mouths for food to slip in, nor anything in the earth, nor down in the oldest graves of the earth, nor anything in the myriads of spheres, nor the myriads of myriads that inhabit them, nor the present, nor the least wisp that is known. It is time to explain myself. Let us stand up. What is known, I strip away. I launch all men and women forward with me into the unknown. The clock indicates the moment, but what does eternity indicate? We have thus far exhausted trillions of winters and summers. There are trillions ahead and trillions ahead of them. Births have brought us richness and variety and other births will bring us richness and variety. I do not call one greater and one smaller. That which fills its period and place is equal to any. Were mankind murderous or jealous upon you, my brother, my sister, I am sorry for you. They are not murderous or jealous upon me. All has been gentle with me. I keep no account with lamentation. What have I to do with lamentation? I am an acme of things accomplished, and I an encloser of things to be. My feet strike an apex, the apices of the stairs, on every step bunches of ages and larger bunches between the steps. All below duly traveled, and still I mount and mount. Rise after rise bow the phantoms behind me. Afar down, I see their huge first nothing. I know I was even there. I waited unseen and always and slept through the lethargic mist and took my time and took no hurt from the fetid carbon. Long I was hugged close, long and long. Immense have been the preparations for me. Faithful and friendly, the arms have helped me. Cycles ferried my cradle, rowing and rowing like cheerful boatmen. For room to me, stars are kept aside in their own rings. They sent influences to look after what was to hold me. Before I was born out of my mother, generations guided me. My embryo has never been torpid. Nothing could overlay it. For it, the nebula cohered to an orb, the long, slow strata piled to rest it on. Vast vegetables gave it sustenance. Monstrous celeroids transported it in their mouths and deposited it with care. All forces have been steadily employed to complete and delight me. Now on the spot, I stand with my robust soul. O span of youth ever pushed elasticity, O man balanced, floored, and full, my lovers suffocate me, crowding my lips thick in the pores of my skin jostling me through streets and public halls, coming naked to me at night, crying by day ahoy from the rocks of the river, swinging and chirping over my head, calling my name from flower beds, vines tangled underbrush, lighting on every moment of my life, bussing my body with soft balsamic buses, noiselessly passing handfuls out of their hearts and giving them to be mine. Old age, superbly rising, a welcome ineffable grace of dying days. Every condition promulgates not only itself, it promulges what grows after and out of itself, and the dark hush promulges as much as any. I open my scuttle at night and see the far sprinkled systems, and all I see multiplied, high as I can cipher edge, but the rim of the farther systems. Wider and wider they spread, expanding, always expanding, outward and outward and forever outward. My son has his son, and round him obediently wheels. He joins with his partners a group of superior circuit, and greater sets follow, making specks of the greatest inside them. There is no stoppage and never can be stoppage. If I you and the worlds and all beneath or upon their surfaces were this moment reduced back to a pallid float, it would not avail in the long run. We should surely bring up again where we now stand and surely go as much farther and then farther and farther. A few quadrillions of eras, a few octillions of cubic leagues do not hazard the span or make it impatient. They are but parts. Anything is but a part. See ever so far, there is limitless space outside of that. Count ever so much, there is limitless time around that. 
my rendezvous is appointed, it is certain. The Lord will be there and wait till I come on perfect terms. The great camarado, the lover true, for whom I pine, will be there. I know I have the best of time and space, and was never measured and will never be measured. I tramp a perpetual journey. Come, listen all. My signs are a rainproof coat, good shoes, and a staff cut from the woods. No friend of mine takes his ease in my chair. I have no chair, no church, no philosophy. I lead no man to a dinner table, library, exchange, but each man and each woman of you I lead upon a knoll. My left hand hooking you round the waist, my right hand pointing to landscapes of continents and the public road. Not I, not anyone else can travel that road for you. You must travel it for yourself. It is not far, it is within reach. Perhaps you've been on it since you were born and did not know. Perhaps it is everywhere, on water and on land. Shoulder your duds, dear son, and I will mine, and let us hasten forth. Wonderful cities and free nations we shall fetch as we go. If you tire, give me both burdens, and rest the chuff of your hand on my hip, and in due time you shall repay the same service to me. For after we start, we never lie by again. This day before dawn, I ascended a hill and looked down at the crowded heaven and said to my spirit, when we become the enfolders of those orbs and the pleasure and knowledge of everything in them, shall we be filled and satisfied then? And my spirit said, no, but we will level that lift to pass and continue beyond. You are also asking me questions, and I hear you. I answer that I cannot answer. You must find out for yourself. Sit a while, dear son. Here are biscuits to eat, and here is milk to drink. But as soon as you sleep and renew yourself in sweet clothes, I kiss you with a goodbye kiss, and open the gate for your egress hence. Long enough have you dreamed contemptible dreams. Now I wash the gum from your eyes. You must habit yourself to the dazzle of the light and of every moment of your life. Long have you timidly waited, holding a plank by the shore. Now I will you be a bold swimmer. To jump off in the midst of the sea, rise again, nod to me, shout, and laughingly dash with your hair. I am the teacher of athletes. He that by me spreads a wider breast than my own provides the width of my own. He most honors my style who leans under it to destroy the teacher. The boy I love, the same becomes a man, not through derived power, but in his own right. Wicked rather than virtuous, out of conformity or fear, fond of his sweetheart, relishing well his stake. Unrequited love, or a slight cutting him worse than sharp steel cuts. First rate to ride, to fight, to hit the bull's eye, to scale a skiff, to sing a song or play on the banjo. Preferring scars and the beard and faces pitted with smallpox over all latherers, and those well tanned to those that keep out of the sun. I teach strain from me, yet who can stray from me? I follow you, whoever you are from the present hour. My words itch at your ears till you understand them. I do not say these things for a dollar or to fill up the time while I wait for a boat. It is you talking just as much as myself. I act as the tongue of you. Tied in your mouth, in mine, it begins to be loosened. I swear I will never again mention love or death inside a house. And I swear I will never translate myself at all, only to him or her who privately stays with me in the open air. If you would understand me, go to the heights or water shore. The nearest gnat is an explanation, and a drop or motion of waves a key. The maul, the oar, the handsaw, second my words. No shuttered room or school can commune with me, but roughs and little children better than they. The young mechanic is closest to me. He knows me well. The woodman that takes his axe and jug with him shall take me with him all day. The farm boy plowing in the field feels good at the sound of my voice. In vessels that sail, my words sail. I go with fishermen and seamen and love them. The soldier camped upon the march is mine. 
On the night ere the pending battle, many seek me, and I do not fail them. On that solemn night, it may be their last. Those that know me, seek me. My face rubs to the hunter's face when he lies down alone in his blanket. The driver thinking of me does not mind the jolt of his wagon. The young mother and old mother comprehend me. The girl and the wife rest the needle a moment and forget where they are. They and all would resume what I have told them. I have said the soul is not more than the body, and I have said that the body is not more than the soul, and nothing not God is greater to one than oneself is. And whoever walks a furlong without sympathy walks to his own funeral dressed in his shroud. And I or you pocketless of a dime may purchase the pick of the earth. And to glance with the eye or show a bean in its pod confounds the learning of all times. And there is no trade or employment but the young man following it may be become a hero. And there is no object so soft but it makes a hub for the wheeled universe. And I say to any man or woman, let your soul stand cool and composed before a million universes. And I say to mankind, be not curious about God, for I who am curious about each am not curious about God. No array of terms can say how much I am at peace about God and about death. I hear and behold God in every object, yet understand God not in the least nor do I understand who there can be more wonderful than myself. Why should I wish to see God better than this day? I see something of God each hour of the 24, and each moment then in the faces of men and women I see God. And in my own face in the glass I find letters from God dropped in the street, and every one is signed by God's name. And I leave them where they are, for I know that wheresoever I go, Others will punctually come forever and ever. And as to you, death, and your bitter hug of mortality, it is idle to try to alarm me. To his work without flinching, the accoucher comes. I see the elder hand pressing, receiving, supporting. I recline by the sills of the exquisite flexible doors and mark the outlet and mark the relief and escape. And as to you, corpse, I think you are good manure but that does not offend me. I smell the white roses, sweet-scented and growing. I reach to the leafy lips. I reach to the polished breasts of melons. And as to you, life, I reckon you are the leavings of many deaths. No doubt I've died myself 10,000 times before. I hear you whispering, O oh, there stars of heaven, O oh, suns, O oh, grass of graves, O oh, perpetual transfers and promotions. If you do not say anything, how can I say anything? Of the turbid pool that lies in the autumn forest, of the moon that descends the steps of the sowing twilight, toss sparkles of day and dusk. Toss on the black stems that decay in the muck. Toss to the moaning gibberish of the dry limbs. I ascend from the moon. I ascend from the night. I perceive that the ghastly glimmer is noonday sunbeams reflected, and about to the steady and central from the offspring, great or small. There is that in me, I do not know what it is, but I know it is in me, wrenched and sweaty, calm and cool, then my body becomes, I sleep. I sleep long. I do not know it. It is without name. It is a word unsaid. It is not in any dictionary, utterance, symbol. Something it swings on more than the earth I swing on. To it the creation is the friend whose embracing awakes me. Perhaps I might tell more. Outlines. I plead for my brothers and sisters. Do you see, O oh my brothers and sisters? It is not chaos or death. It is form, union, plan. It is eternal life. It is happiness. The past and present wilt, I have filled them, emptied them, and proceeded to fill my next fold of the future. Listener up there, what have you to confide to me? Look in my face while I snuff the sidle of evening. Talk honestly, no one else hears you, and I stay only a minute longer. Do I contradict myself? 
Very well then, I contradict myself. I am large, I contain multitudes. I concentrate toward them that are nigh. I wait on the door slab. Who has done his day's work? Who will soonest be through with his supper? Who wishes to walk with me? Will you speak before I am gone? Will you prove already too late? The spotted hawk swoops by and accuses me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I too am not a bit tamed. I too am untranslatable. I sound my barbaric yop over the roofs of the world. The last scud of day holds back for me. It flings my likeness after the rest and true as any on the shadowed wilds. It coaxes me to the vapor and the dusk. I depart as air. I shake my white locks at the runaway sun. I effuse my flesh in eddies and drift it in lacy jags. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere, waiting for you. <laughs>